Twitter has announced it's disbanded its Trust and Safety Council, formed about six years ago to deal with things like hate speech, terrorism, child exploitation. The end of the council is just the latest shakeup at Twitter since it's purchased by Elon Musk. Most supporters say that his new policies and the recent release of internal documents are needed to provide better transparency about how the company operates, particularly after controversies involving the company's content policies in the 2020 election. Critics are saying that Musk and his allies are misrepresenting the work of Twitter's former management when it comes to policing content on the social media network. Certainly a lot to take in and understand, which is why we asked our Doniel Sullivan to help us make sense of it. Here's his report. I've been suspended by Twitter uh, a few times. Because I got sick of Twitter. You got censored too censored. much. Censored. She was in jail every other day, so no. Twitter jail. Republicans have long believed social media companies like Twitter are biased against them. Shadow ban, 100%. You look at what's going on. Enter the Twitter files. Over the past few weeks, journalists picked by Elon Musk have been given access to some of Twitter's internal systems and communications. Matt Taibbi is one of them. They have a whole universe of stuff that they can do to any single account. They can dial it all the way down to you cannot be searched, all the way up to your account will not trend, only people who follow you can see you, even people who follow you won't see you unless they search. So far select images like these of Twitter's internal systems purport to show how some prominent conservatives were added to lists like Do Not Amplify and seemingly broke Twitter's rules, but few specifics were included in the files. We were averaging 115,000 retweets a day when we were really at our peak. Then all of a sudden we saw off a cliff almost immediately our engagement, our retweets disappear. Twitter has previously acknowledged it de-amplifies accounts if used as harmful or that regularly break its rules, but it does not tell those users their accounts are being limited. Musk wants to change that. Musk has talked a lot about informing people of removal and reduction, and that is a good thing, but it's not clear how he's actually going to have the engineering and the resources to do it. While Gabriel Nicholas, who has studied de-amplification, says transparency is a good thing, there are some cases where it is better to not inform a user their account is being limited, such as the case of serial harassers. When we look at the kinds of accounts that Twitter has de-amplified or banned over the last uh, two or three years, it tends to be accounts that will post things that are both novel and outrageous and detrimental in some way to society, whether it's through hate, harassment, or incitement. So what is de-amplification? Well, sometimes when you open your Twitter feed, you're not just seeing the latest tweets. What you're seeing is the algorithm recommending to accounts and tweets it thinks you might be interested in. Now, let's imagine Twitter is Times Square. People here can say whatever they want to whoever they want, but sometimes the algorithm might pick up the more interesting comments and tweets and highlight them on some of the billboards. But if you're blacklisted, you're never going to get your comments or tweets up on these billboards. And that is what some people understand to be shadow banning. Shadow banning definitely has a lot of negative connotation. It sort of brings up this image of a shadowy cabal of decision makers who determine what people can see and what people can't see. But I think it's really not a productive word to use when we're actually trying to talk about some of the nuances of content policy. While many groups have raised concerns over de-amplification, the central focus of the Twitter files is that Republicans were unfairly targeted. That is something Twitter has long denied. Twitter undertook no behavior to selectively censor conservative Republicans or conservative voices on your platform. Is that correct? Correct. But Republicans are not convinced, particularly after Twitter initially suppressed the 2020 New York Post Hunter Biden laptop story, believing it could have been Russian disinformation. That decision is something former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey says was a mistake. So too does Yoel Ross, Twitter's former head of trust and safety. It is widely reported that I personally directed the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop story. It is absolutely unequivocally untrue. But he was involved in internal conversations about it. The Twitter files show how staff at Twitter discussed and debated how to handle the Biden story. We didn't know what to believe. We didn't know what was true. There was, there was smoke. And ultimately for me, uh, it didn't reach a place where I was comfortable removing this content from Twitter. But so it was a mistake. In my opinion, yes.
Musk himself has endorsed similar de-amplification policies, tweeting, New Twitter policy is freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach. Negative hate tweets will be max deboosted. By and large, these tools, which have been around for some time, have been politicized. And as Musk is trying to suggest that the old Twitter is going to be different from the new Twitter, we want to be careful to remind ourselves that all technology is politics by other means. And Donnell Sullivan joins us now. I mean, is it clear that Republicans were targeted? Yeah, I mean, well, that is certainly what is being presented here through the Twitter files. Uh, people, I think, might argue that it is just a selection and, and potentially what is being presented is selective. Uh, I think also people who had worked at Twitter at the time would say, well, the reason we had to take action or we thought we had to take action against people who happen to be Republicans were that they were often the people who were sharing uh, misinformation, disinformation or, or hate. Um, all that being said, you know, there are revelations in this that are being presented as brand new, which we actually knew about for the past few years. Uh, that being said, I, you know, we have seen some people try to say that this is all a nutting burger. Uh, I don't think that's the case either. I mean, you know, go back to 2021, January 2021, when Twitter did kick off the then president of the United States, mm. it wasn't just, um, you know, Republicans here in the US who had an issue with that about the potential power of big tech. We heard European leaders, um, a spokesperson for Angela Merkel at the time, you know, no big fan of Trump's that we know, uh, expressing some concern about that. So I think there is a discussion to be had here uh, and we are going to see more revelations. Yeah. Uh, whether or not we'll be able to get access to the files ourselves, uh, it's unlikely uh, under Musk's leadership.